Hi, in this video I will show you how to build a fully dynamic three statement financial model in Microsoft Excel. You will learn how to create revenue and expense assumptions, build financial statements and dynamic charts. You will also learn how the income statement, cash flow statement, and the balance sheet are connected to the three statements financial model. Download the file I'll be working with for free using the link below. And let's get started! I will start building my financial model with core inputs at the top left of the dashboard. The model will be 5 years long. And in this section I will create 3 more small sections for the sales volume, sale price and cost of goods sold assumptions. First of all, let's dive into the product assumptions. We have three products here and uh, we have a launch date for each product and we have a sales volume forecast by years. So this is pretty flexible as you may enter every year different uh, sales volume you may have different launch date for each product so for example you may start in in the middle of the year start selling some product in the middle of the year or you may use instead of products you may use categories you may use uh, stores you may use different product lines or services and also you may use instead of sales volume in units you may use tickets, orders, and so on. Now let's dive into the pricing. As you may see, the, this model will generate revenue based on volume X multiplied by price. So we need to enter our pricing for each product. It's pretty flexible as, again, we have pricing for each year separately and we have different prices for each product separately. Now the final step is to have COX or cost of goods sold assumptions which is our expenses directly related to the manufacturing of this product or purchasing from third party of this product and so on. It depends on your business. I would need to add a bit more key assumptions like currency sign, first financial year, corporate tax and inventory level. By changing the currency sign you'll be able to change the reporting currency. So change it to euro or pounds and you'll see impact on your reports immediately. First financial year is the starting point of your timeline. So enter it here to change your timeline for the financial model. I'm using name ranges to give cell names. Corporate tax percentage is the portion of your net profit you are going to pay to your government. And finally, inventory level, which is actually safety stock level. Now let me add a few more assumptions at the dashboard. First, funding assumptions, which is your capital rising amounts. You will have four rounds starting from founders till series A. Next, I will add four time frames for working capital assumptions with a 30 day step. This way, I will adjust how long it will take to collect cash from the goods sold.
The opposite side to cash collection is to pay suppliers and vendors with the delay for the cost of goods sold and operational expenses. Operational expenses are variable and fixed expenses, as well as salaries and wages. These adjustments will have a positive impact on my cash flow and make my model more realistic. In addition to capital rising, I may need adapt financing feature. So I will add four basic assumptions to calculate a debt repayment schedule. First one is the loan amount, second is date of issuance, third is repayment time, and finally the last one is interest rate. This way I will estimate when and how I will repay my debt. Now I have everything I need to calculate the top of the income statement, which is uh, revenue calculation, Cox calculation, and finally gross margin. So I will do it right now. First of all, I will build a timeline for the 60 months ahead. Once I done with the model's timeline, I can add a drop down list to every cell with the data selection. Doing this, I will prevent myself from entering occasional data. Now, let's go back to the income statement. Here I will start calculating sales volume in units. First of all, I would need to enter and link the product names from the dashboard and start entering computations in the J column. So the sales volume calculation formula should consider the launch date and spread the analyzed sales volume forecast by months. Now I will pull pricing data from the dashboard for each particular product by years and using index formula I will show it right here. The same action I should take for the Cox section. So I will take data from the dashboard and link it right here. Finally, I need to subtract Cox from the revenue to get gross margin calculation. Now, I will create three sections for the operational expense assumptions. These are variable expenses, fixed expenses and salaries and wages. These three expense blocks will have the same structure up to 10 category lines, starting date, ending date, and the assumption itself for 5 years. Next, I will add operating expenses calculations. I will start from adding timeline to this sheet and adding financial years to the assumption blocks. Next, I will add drop-down lists using data validation feature to each cell with selecting data. Next, I will make 
monthly calculation for the variable expenses, fixed expenses, and finally salaries and wages. Now I'm ready to link all the OPEX and revenue calculations to the income statement. This model should have capex calculation, link it to the income statement and to the cash flow and to the balance sheet. So I need to create a tab where I will place my assumptions related to the capital expenditure. First of all, I will do monthly schedule for five years as I did it before. And then after I will go and create three blocks with calculations and with the depreciation calculation. Once the calculation is ready, I have to link them into the income statement. Now I need to make inventory calculations at the capital tab. So here I will estimate how many additional inventory I should purchase to make a safety stock. Now it's time to calculate debt repayment schedule. Based on assumptions I've made at the dashboard, I will do interest expense calculation as well as remaining balance calculation and finally repayment amount for the particular months. The very last block at the capital tab is the equity. So I would need to link these founding rounds with the assumptions made at the dashboard. Let's do it.
Now I have to get back to income statement and link interest expenses with the interest expenses calculation. And right after this I can do net profit before tax calculation. The last two lines left to be done. First one is the tax expense which is the calculation of corporate tax and net profit after tax which is the difference before net profit before tax minus tax expense. Now let's do a cash flow statement. First I would need to copy paste timeline from income statement to the cash flow. Next I will do cash collection calculation considering accounts receivable. Now what I mean by this is that I have to take the current month's revenue and multiply it by 0 to 30 days assumption plus last month's revenue multiplied by the 30 to 60 days assumption and next is add 3 months before and 4 months before with the appropriate assumptions. Now I have to calculate accounts payable for the COX and accounts payable for the OPEX. I will start with COX. So I will take the COX and inventory purchased for the current months and multiply it by account payable assumption for the first months. Next I will do the same like I did it before for the accounts receivable, adding last months, prior months and three months before. For the accounts payable OPEX part, I would need to take operational expenses total from the income statement, which is line 69, and do the same math as I did it for the Cox calculation. Now next step will be to add interest paid and corporate tax paid. Finally I can do the net operating activities calculation. So I need to copy paste and populate these computations till the model end. So the next block in the income statement is investment activities. So I have to link the capital expenditure from the cap capital tab. And the last section of the cash flow statement is financial activities. Here I will show equity rising and debt drawdowns. Now I will work on the balance sheet. This is the most important financial statement in the financial model and luckily this is the last one. I will start from cash, so I will link net movement from the cash flow and the last month's balance. This way I will get current month's cash. Next is account receivable, so I will take opening balance plus revenue accrued from the income statement 
and minus revenue collected from the cash flow statement. Next, I will link inventory. Finally, I will sum it up the current assets. After finishing with current assets, I will do fixed assets. So I would need to take sum of three closing book values and show it at the fixed assets line. Now let me populate this calculation across the model timeline and I'm ready to start working on the total assets. So total assets is the sum of current and non-current assets. Now it's time to calculate accounts payable as opening balance minus corks and inventory purchased plus corks paid from the cash flow minus OPEX accrued from the income statement plus OPEX paid from the cash flow. Now I will link up the debt outstanding balance from the capital calculation and populate it till the end of the model. The last section of the balance sheet is equity. I will link up equity calculation here. And for the retained profits, I will sum up the opening balance and net profit from the income statement. After populating these calculations, I can do a balance check, which is net assets minus total equity. Check pass it as net assets are equal to total equity. Now I'm ready to calculate cash available for dividends. I'll take cash opening balance plus net cash movement. Next, I'll add dividends paid placeholder. As I assume, I would need to forecast dividends paid in the future. Then, I'll need to link up dividends paid at the cash flow and sum up dividends to the retained profits at the balance sheet. Once all is done, I'm ready to build up a nice looking profit and loss statement report and link up the raw data.
I will fine tune the dashboard by adding the core financials at the bottom left. I will add a few KPIs at the top right of the dashboard. Minimal cash, return on equity, internal rate of return and profit margin. I will start with minimal cash. So minimal cash shows the exact months and amount when the cash balance will be the lowest. Return on equity shows the returns on the investment it received from shareholders. The internal rate of return is the annual rate of growth that an investment is expected to generate. And finally, profit margin indicates how many cents of profit has been generated for each dollar of sale.
At the bottom right of the dashboard I will place four charts so I need to define a right place for them and also I would need to format cells using definite colors. And the very last step is to add charts to the income statement and the cash flow statement at the financial summary tab and add four charts at the dashboard.
Download the working file for free in the description below. If you found this video valuable, please like, subscribe and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.